I would like to share with you a message that I will title it as a vision collision. Vision collision. During this time of pandemic and during this time of um, uncertainty, a lot of people lose their motivation, a lot of people lose their courage and they lose their focus. I believe that God's solution for a distracted, defeated, disappointed, discouraged life is not to inject us with a feeling but to fill us with the vision. In fact the cause of distraction, defeat, disappointment and discouragement is really a loss of vision. Life of vision inspires action. Life of vision becomes a practical guide for creating plans, setting goals and objectives. Life of vision helps to evaluate our life. It provides focus. It gives us faith. It gives us motivation. It produces discipline. It opens doors for miracles and it gives life a purpose. A person without vision will be a slave to their reality. A vision is when you have a picture of a desired future. I think it was Andy Stanley, he said a vision is a clear mental picture of what could be fueled and by the conviction of what should be. One of the greatest things you can get from God after you received salvation and the gift of the Holy Spirit is a personal vision for your life. That vision will keep you on course of discipline. That vision will give you a sense of focus, motivation and direction. God's vision has a protection, provision in it. God blessed young Joseph. He didn't give him just favor. He didn't just give him blessings. He gave him a dream at the young age. He gave Abraham a vision at the very young age of his marriage where he will have masses of people that will call him a father. He gave Israel a dream of a promised land. God gave Jesus a dream of the nations coming and being saved and he gave church that dream where we will reach masses and disciple them for the kingdom of God. I really believe that a person without vision is worse than a person without sight. You're honestly roaming through life and typically a person without vision will be a slave to their reality. A slave to their circumstances, to the mood, to the weather change, to what's happening with the government, to what's happening politically, to what's happening on the Wall Street. You will always be floating with the current instead of going in the direction that God outlined for you. In the beginning this church was started not with funds, not with learning even to speak English. When my pastor, my uncle started this church it was started with a vision. There was no money, there was no people, there was no talent, there was no gifts, there was no resources and there was no connection but there was a vision. A vision has the ability to pull on itself and attract resources, talent. It has a way like a magnet to attract things to itself and change everything first about the person who has the vision and then people around who hear that vision. When I was a young teenager and being pulled by the vision of my pastor, by the vision of this church that we will reach our community, I also got that vision for myself. That our church will be like a large warehouse, like a Winko store and people will come hungry into this place 24-7 and will receive something. I was just a teenager. I spoke very little English. I did not know the culture. I did not know the church world but at the young age God didn't give me the English language. He didn't give me the speaking ability. He gave me a vision. That vision became the goal post by which I started to outline my life for. It gave my life a focus. It gave my life discipline. It gave my life motivation and it gave my life a determination. Little did I knew is with that vision God attached his signs and wonders. God started to attach his blessings to it. And today I see the little bit of that vision already taking place because 24-7 people are downloading the content that is produced at Hungry Gen and are getting blessed. 24-7 in different parts of the world people are receiving knowledge and spiritual food because of what is produced at this house. And my friend we're only getting started. And so I just want to encourage each one of you, come on somebody, have a vision for your life. 
And so let's dive into the Word of God. I want us to open Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, verse 2, verse 3 and verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, verse 2, 3 and 4. We will start with verse 1. I will stand my watch and I will set myself on the rampant and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. And then in verse 2 it says, and then the Lord answered and said, write the vision. And so first what happens with Habakkuk is he positions himself properly so that he can hear from God, hear his voice. If you're taking notes, write this down, is God's voice is my vision. The vision for your life is not hidden in a seminar on success. It's hidden in the voice of God. Habakkuk the Bible says he didn't go to college and the university to get a vision for his life. A college will give you a degree but the voice of God will give you a vision for your life. Me and my wife are currently uh, building a house. We're actually we're not building a house. There's another gentleman uh, in our church, Paul. He is the one that's building the house. But we are the owners of the house that he is building. The how, the, how did that came about was this. Is that after we got the land, we developed a plan. There was nothing on the land but, tumble, but tumbleweeds and we developed a plan. The plan meaning the house existed on paper before it existed with some in a place you can see. And then came a builder, somebody who takes what's in the paper and makes it real. Now those of you who know about the world of construction is the builder usually works for the wishes and desires of the owners. Not the other way around. The builder doesn't build what he wants, he builds what's on the plan and then in line with the heart and the desire of the owners. You and I are builders on this earth. God has a blueprint for your life but you are not building a life based on your desires and your delights. That's why a builder always has to have a good communication with the owner so that what is built brings pleasure to the owner. As a Christian you don't build your life according to the standards and the desires of this world. That's why you have to have and know the voice of God so that what God has in His plan for your life, you are building it in sync with His delights and His desires. Come on somebody. The Bible says in Exodus 25 verse 40, Moses built a tabernacle according to the pattern shown in heaven. The scripture says Solomon built a temple according to the plan given to him by David. Solomon had money and a blueprint already prepared for him. Solomon lived his daddy's dreams and I just want to pause for a moment. A lot of people say well you know you should never live somebody else's dreams. As a Christian you are a builder. You are living someone else's dream. You are fulfilling God's blueprint for your life. For I know the plans that I think of you. Meaning God has a blueprint for how your life is supposed to be ran. And God wants you to get it on the paper first. Get it in your mind first before you see it in your life. Get your future in here first. God wants to reveal it to you. But that's why we have to hear His voice. That's why we have to position ourselves so that we know His voice. Come on somebody. The Bible says that even Jesus did not say and did not do anything until he heard the Father say and Father do. That's why Jesus' messages are so simple because he didn't write them. He copied them. I remember one time I was asking Zachy to speak uh, earlier this year and I gave him my notes and I met with him and I said, Zach, you are going to do uh, with my notes what Jesus did with his father's notes. I'm going to preach him. I said word for word and you won't say that this was my sermon. You're going to make it your own. And Zach preached fire. I watched it afterwards and I was like, man, you made it your own. See, when Jesus did not preach his own sermon, that's why when you read the writings of Paul, you will see there's a depth in it. You read the writings of Jesus, you're like, that's like so simple because it wasn't his. He didn't preach his own sermons. He did not do his own works. What he saw the Father do. Jesus was a builder of the Father's blueprint. Your life on earth is not to develop your vision. It's to discover your vision from the Heavenly Father. His voice is my vision and my job is to stay connected to Him so that I build according to His plan, His pattern and His blueprint and so that His name is glorified on earth through my life. Come on somebody. Thank you Jesus. How do you hear the voice of the Lord? Since our vision 
our blueprint for life what we're supposed to do we don't have to conjure up we don't have to go take yoga classes and go hike the mountain to hear and to figure our life we don't have to figure our life out we don't have to decide our vision we have to discover it how do we hear the voice of God I'm so glad we asked three very simple practical tips very simple on how to hear the voice of God to hear God number one you have to be near God number two in order to be familiar with his voice we have to be filled with his word and number three when we lower the noise we will hear his voice I'm gonna repeat that again so we have to first be filled with God's word if we want to be familiar with his voice so the more not the more books on how to hear God's voice more book God wrote God wrote one book the Holy Spirit wrote one book if you want to know his voice learn the Bible study the Bible read the Bible memorize the Bible because God's voice and God's word don't contradict number two in order to know God's voice because our vision our future depends on it we have to be near God if we want to hear God God doesn't scream why does he whisper because he expects those who hear him to be close God expects you to be close that's why the Bible says still small voice why does is his voice not loud boisterous because God always expects you to be close to hear it and the problem is not always that God doesn't speak is that he does but because there's such a gap between us and him that we just don't hear it and many of us are saying God raise the vol volume and God says bridge the gap in order to hear we gotta be near come on somebody and the lastly is that we have to lower the noise to hear his voice have you ever said something across the house and your other spouse had a music on or had a vacuum on or the washer and the dryer was on and you couldn't hear it and so that is sometimes what's happening in our life is there's a lot of noise going on here and that's why the Bible says uh, Jacob read he says that be still and know that I am God he leads us in a still pasture he leads us be besides the still waters and he makes us lay down at green pastures meaning there has to be we have to lower the noise that does not mean only turning off the music I'm not talking about turning off the phone I'm talking about in here where you find quietness where you find confidence in here so you can hear his voice because his voice is my vision I don't have to find my vision I just have to find the Lord and he guides me to that vision he shows me a picture of that vision God speaks in many ways he can speak through an audible voice there's nine ways that God can speak nine main ways audible voice angels dreams visions God can use nature to speak God can use coincidences and circumstances to speak God can use other people to speak God can use prophets to speak but the one that most likely many of us will hear his voice through is through the scripture and through our spirit amen his voice is my vision but I want you to see number two verse number two the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain on the iPad I mean the tablets <laughs> that he may run who reads it see for those of you who wanted to see if the tablets are in the Bible they're in the Bible Habakkuk <laughs> God already had a vision he saw Apple company and Android Google write it and make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it the second thing that I would like to highlight is vision works when we walk toward it vision works when we walk toward it God does not give us a vision to pamper us God doesn't give us a vision to make us feel good God gives us the vision to change the direction and give a motivation to our pace in life few things I want to highlight from this verse number one we need to write the vision physically on the paper on the board on the phone on the wall in the garage door somewhere write the vision you can't keep it here it has to be physically written somewhere one of the things that I love is putting it on my phone under reminders for each year on my reminders I pin it to the top and I write down 10 things or five things or three things that I have a vision for for God to do with my partnership this year 
it could be simple things but things that I believe for you have to have it written it's something that you see regularly it's something that it sees you regularly amen number two you have to read the vision because you can write it and never read it the scripture says in here that he who runs may read it meaning God expects you to read it that means for some of us that means we have to put that on the sticky paper in the bathroom because that's where we read only our face put it in the kitchen put it on a refrigerator set up a reminder why so that there's a constant reminder that your life has a meaning and what is happening now is not what's going to happen tomorrow your land might be empty but because there is a plan on the paper there is going to be a house on the land that means that because there is a vision that is written that vision will become a reality in your life read the vision a lot of us are reading other people's visions a lot of us read other people's dreams on social media a lot of us read other people's stuff on news but God wants you to read your own vision every day open up your time in prayer and pull out that small little sheet where God gave you a vision of what is to come in your life and read it to yourself read it to your future remind yourself this is where I'm headed to can somebody say amen, amen. number three what we do with the vision is you have to speak the vision it says this that at the end the vision will speak to you meaning when the vision becomes reality the vision will become a voice see when a house is built from a plan and it becomes real you don't have to come and say that's a house a house will speak every single time anybody passes by and say I am a house look at me you can't avoid me because I'm here see vision will speak when it becomes real but once it's on the paper you have to speak it you have to pray it you have to declare it you have to decree it we have to put photos on it and say we believe thousands locally and millions globally when thousands locally and millions globally come they will speak but until they speak we have to speak the vision speak to the dry bones let the weak say i am strong speak to the dry valley speak to your empty lot and begin to speak your vision out many of us we use our mouth to describe our situation God used his in Genesis 1 to change the situation what goes from a blueprint on the paper to a construction on the land is your mouth if we will constantly declare my children are bad my health is deteriorating our finances are horrible our life is getting worse nobody's treating us well if you have a plan from God vision from God and you read it and you wrote it but you speak your reality you are wasting your energy wasting the power wasting the creativity and you are muzzling we put a mask on the Holy Ghost and many of us they put physical masks now it's required to wear them I do feel like the devil has put a mask on many people's mouths where they don't speak their vision they speak their nightmare their reality their feelings how somebody treated me and I'm not saying that we have to ignore our reality what I am saying is this don't give your reality more attention than it already has earned don't elevate your reality higher than the vision that you have that means if you are sick don't walk around and say I am sick and going to die say I am healthy fighting sickness instead of saying I am weak and I'm struggling say I am strong fighting weakness I am not poor trying to get blessed I am blessed fighting poverty I am not cursed trying to be blessed I am blessed fighting curses that means my mouth has life and death in it I choose which you know how when you have a faucet in your house there's cold water and hot water that's how your mouth is it can go either way we decide which one some of us just like to keep it just warm enough so that people don't think we're crazy and so that we, we don't sound too pessimistic just warm enough God wants us to keep our mouth hot that we speak the vision write the vision read the vision speak the vision 
and the last thing we want us to do with the vision and it says right here in Habakkuk 2 2 that he who runs may read it God wants me to write it to read it to speak it and run it what does that mean a vision if I may borrow uh, Jacob Jacob I would like you to stand right here vision is in your future God is not in the present God is not in the future God is outside of time so this is the vision and this is you and I right now this is how it works when you walked when I walk toward you you begin to walk toward me you take a step forward toward your vision your vision takes a step forward toward you it says in Habakkuk this it will come to you the meaning it's not only me coming to my vision God has set it up that if I am running God accelerates the process by causing the vision to run also I can't explain it how it happens that something that is not like human doesn't have a mind of its own but a promise and a vision from God it has a speed directed by God now imagine this Jacob if you can just stand there if it will only be me walking toward the vision it will take me longer but the scripture says the wait for the vision because it will come that means it's not only me running toward it that vision has legs of its own it's beginning to walk toward me as I walk toward it and as I get closer it may seem like oh but it's taking so long you're not the only one moving the vision is also moving and there will be a collision with your vision come on somebody collision with the vision not as gentle as this one come on so what I want to encourage each person today is that God wants you to walk towards your vision how does uh, for example house example how does house get built it doesn't get built because we have a builder and a plan it builds because now there's a process they do excavation they create a foundation then they begin to put the frame up then they put trusses they then they put you know other stuff on it they put the shingles they put the roof and th th there is a process that vision goes gradually from the paper into something you can see with your eyes exactly the same thing happens with the vision if you have a vision to own your own home that means you gotta begin to walk towards it by repairing your credit score if you have a vision that one day you will be married and God will send you a wonderful husband that means it's time to begin to be a wonderful wife because the Bible says blessed is the man who finds a wife that means he, she wasn't a woman she was already a wife before she became a wife what does that mean that means God wants me to move forward toward the vision God wants us to pray for our vision God wants us to plan for our vision. God wants us not to wait until millions and thousands come. God wants us to start reaching the people that we have already moved towards the vision. As you walk toward it, it will begin to work for you. Some of us feel like, but the vision is stagnant. The vision is stuck. My friend, don't worry about the vision. Make sure you worry about your steps. Make sure you're moving forward. Now the problem with many people is they are not moving in the direction of their vision. They're moving in the direction of where their friends are going always. And they're constantly watching who's doing what. The question is not who's doing what. The question what is he doing. Because you're called to imitate. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. God told Moses he didn't tell him to go spy on the pharaohs and see what they're building. God says I want you to build what I am building over there. God did not tell Jesus go look at what all the wise Greek people and Romans are saying. He says I want you to hear what I am saying and I want you to say that. And that's why all of the wise Greek and wise Roman people you don't read their books as you read the Bible. Why? Because Jesus heard what the Father say and he said it. And God wants us to copy him. He wants us to imitate him. He wants us to get on our face before him and hear his voice and that's why we will find our vision for our life and walk 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 and then if you get tired of walking run toward your vision add a little fasting to it add a little extra saving money to it so you can pay down your debt you God says if you really want it faster run if you really want it faster don't just walk run if you want collision faster speed this is the only place where you will not get fined for it. Come on somebody. Amen. Thank you Jacob. Run toward your vision. 
the vision that we have in this house is the vision it's not just praying speaking this is not just writing it and having it on the screen this is not just constant rehearsal this is strategizing for it that's why the cameras are here that's why there's a social media presence that we have that's why starting tomorrow I'm going to be doing a conference in South Africa we're going to go global yesterday we had a service in Vietnam from my room that's why this vision is not going to happen automatically we know that there's an acceleration happens in the realm of the spirit we don't control we control our steps and when we get tired of waiting for it God says it's the, the ball is in your court you can run if you give a good healthy heart run meaning fast pray cut back the rest of the spending so you can pay down your debt and get that house stop living like a bachelor person begin to develop disciplines like a married person because that's what you want to be you want to be a married person God says you have that vision begin to pray for it begin to plan for it you want to write a book start a blog first begin to walk toward it you want to write an album create music well start with worshiping God start with creating that music when nobody else is noticing create a YouTube channel start something walk toward your vision and when you get tired of walking run vision collision will happen not automatically not because God has set a time but because we are walking towards it and the last thing I would like to share is verse 3 for the vision is yet for an appointed time somebody say appointed time come on say a little louder say appointed time at the end it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it didn't say you will come to it it says it will come to you now it will not tarry now I find a paradox here I find in a contradiction one is God says don't worry about it it's coming at its time and then God says it won't come at its time wait for it so this is what I would like to share with you vision will be late and on time it's how God is God is always on time and usually late <laughs> you may say how is that possible it's it's possible like this there are people watching us on live stream right now like I have a friend named Ed he's watching from UK he is on a different time zone because he lives in a different place because God lives in a different place his time is not always the same as yours so that's why what's on your time usually is different than his and it doesn't mean that God canceled the vision it's just because we live in different time zones that's why Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 7 he said to them my time has not yet come but your time is always ready Jesus was here on earth but lived in a different zone and in a different realm that's why he told his disciple he says it's your time not mine you're like but we're together God's time is different than yours which means vision will always be on God's time and usually 99.9 percent .9 late on your and my time I remember when I was building a first home and my dad told me a secret he says Vlad he says keep two things in mind the home will take twice as long and twice as much <laughs> he says if you can just remember that you'll never be disappointed oh and how right he was he says you have a plan he says just multiply it by two he says then you'll never be disappointed I want to encourage you with something this this morning your vision will not be punctual you mean you have to be patient your vision the one that God gave you it will not happen that early that you expected how many people have said by this time I was hoping by this time I already planned mm-hmm King Saul also planned for Samuel to show up at particular time he didn't I'm pretty sure Abraham did not plan to have children at 100 and I am pretty sure Israel did not wait that their new appointed leader will spend 40 days kicking and hanging out with God on the mountain every single thing God is involved with he will always be late it's not because he lost track of time it's that you and I live in a different time zone He's always on his time. He came late to Lazarus's healing. Lazarus was dead and buried already for four days. Jesus wasn't late. Anything you get early came from the devil. 
devil offered Jesus the kingdoms too early. Proverbs says that inheritance gained hastily will not last at the end. If it came early, it's a trap. If it came late, it was a test. If it came late, most likely was God, God was involved. In. Read these verses again. God says, it will tarry. It will come late, but it will be on time. Meaning it will be on His time. But most likely, your projected, my anticipated, my time, God will disappoint. So what do I do? A few simple things. One, when the vision is late, don't leave it. Wait for it. When the vision is late, don't drop it. Don't throw the towel. Don't be like Saul. He says, I'm going to offer the sacrifice on my own. Don't be like Israel. We don't know what happened to this Moses. Let's build a cow and dance around it. Don't be like five foolish virgins and the king delayed and they said, we're just going to go back in town and, and get some tacos and on the way get some oil as well. And they missed the appointment. Don't be like the 400 something people when Jesus says wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit and they got busy honestly and after 10 after many days the Holy Spirit came but only 120 out of 500 were there. Why? Because people dropped it and they walked away. How many people God gave the vision that they aborted before they birthed it? Because they got tired of waiting. I'm going to tell you something. Waiting is more harder than working. Waiting is harder than wrestling. Waiting is the strongest and the biggest warfare you will do. Because waiting is not pathetically, passively, just kind of throwing the towel. Waiting is still anticipating, still walking toward it. Even though the clock has expired, it's past your time and you're still believing for it and you're still hoping for it. Why? Because God said it. He said it will not lie. It will surely come. But it already is supposed to happen five years ago. It's supposed to happen ten years ago. I thought I'll be married by this time. I thought I'll get out of debt by this time. I thought I'll have children by this time. I thought I'll have a breakthrough by this time. I thought by this time this will happen and God says it still was not my time. There is my appointed time where you and your vision will collide and God says though it tarries, though it tarries, walk toward it, wait for it, don't throw the towel, don't give up. Why? Because it will surely come to pass. My God, it will come to pass says God. It will come to pass says the Holy Spirit. It will come to pass the God who gave you the vision. It will come to pass says the Son who gave you the vision. My God, somebody give God some praise right now. And let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we will reap if we don't lose heart, we don't lose courage. For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. But in the fullness of time had come God sent forth His Son born out of a woman under the law. Let's hold on. A delay will disappoint you. It can discourage you and it can derail you so the devil can defeat you. What I'm saying is this, delay is going to be your biggest test because in delay discouragement comes in. In discouragement disappointment comes in. After disappointment we become derailed meaning we become lost and that's where the devil steps in and he gives his strongest shot called defeat. Dreams are lost like that all the time because it took longer than we expected. The vision for thousands local and millions globally, it's not just for us. It's for our children, our children's children until the Lord tarries. We have a time clock but we know that God is the one who made a promise. He said it will come true. So I want to encourage you today, the dreams that you gave up, the vision that you buried, the vision that you became so impatient when it didn't come true and you dropped it and you walked away. I would like to recharge your batteries today and tell you if you've committed and miscarriage, if you miscarried your vision, if you gave up on it and you're just going without focus, without discipline, no motivation, if you gave up on it, whether that vision was getting rid of debt, 
whether that vision the Lord gave you was to you need to lose a hundred pounds maybe that vision God gave you is that you need to break the curse of poverty in your family and you need to be the first one to build a home where that vision is to be a life group leader to be a disciple maker or, or that vision was to take that mission trip or that vision was that you know you are going to be the author you're gonna be the artist you are gonna start your own business whatever that vision that you carried that it looks so sweet it spoke to you it fed you it gave you a sense of meaning a sense of direction sense of motivation and what killed it was delay but God said it it will come late your vision didn't die we can kill it it will not die on its own if we don't kill it because we get disappointed discouraged defeated and derailed that's why God says in the New Testament he says in due time we will reap if we don't lose heart God says keep the heart burning that's why God says keep the heart burning for your vision keep your mouth full of faith keep your emotions charged with the Word of God why because it's not gonna die but you do have the power to kill it you do have the power to squander it you do have a power to abort it you do have a power to throw the towel and say I don't know what happened to this God of mine he probably misled me he lied but the Habakkuk says it will not lie vision is not gonna lie vision is not gonna die but God expects you and I to wait and I'm gonna tell you one thing waiting is the hardest thing you will do in your life waiting with a good attitude instead of giving up last Friday me and my wife celebrated our 10th um, year um, anniversary and we did our uh, second wedding second marriage with the same spouse the way to go I had to go to the bank to break $100 to uh, pay some people and uh, I took my moped and went to the drive-thru of the bank of the drive-thru of the bank and God I feel like orchestrates those things to develop the fruit of patience and there was five cars before me so I stood there for about five minutes and I quit I was like I'm gonna go to the gas station get this moped filled with gas and come back and there will be no cars here five minutes of waiting and you know you're sitting you never know how sick you are in your soul until you have to wait no wonder the verse 4 of Habakkuk says this but the proud his soul is not right in him and the just shall live by faith right after waiting for the vision God talks about people who are sick in their soul and I'm gonna tell you one thing that verse never came alive until I had to stand in line I went to the gas station I got myself a gas I also went and charged myself with a Red Bull I got myself a Red Bull I come back and lo and behold there is more cars that were there before and I'm, and I'm mad and the worst part about it I don't have a phone on me so I can't stay distracted I have to just just be there I can scroll at anything I can't look at anything I can't take photos and tell the Instagram how frustrated I am I can't record a video how disappointing this bank that I'm banking with have made me and I'm standing there and then there's two lines have you ever done this where the other line is going faster so I switched the line and then the other line it's like God a purpose pushed it the whole line went right before me and I'm standing there like an idiot the proud the Bible says the proud behold the proud his soul is not right in him but the just shall live by faith God will not waste your waiting he will expose every sickness you have inside when you wait you realize how sick you are how insecure you are it's in waiting you realize how offended you are and God does not waste waiting he exposes everything to the front and he says deal with it let's work on it why because before the vision comes true let's have you fixed so that you don't wait for the fulfillment of my promise to be fulfilled in your soul so you can you can get filled by me instead of waiting for the fulfillment so you can get happy before you get a husband so you can get blessed before you get a house so Abraham you can be a father of nations before you have Isaac I want to fix stuff in your soul because God will not waste waiting God will use waiting God will use waiting to build a stronger spine because God does not want a snowflake Christian he wants a soldier Christian and in waiting stuff will come to the surface Hallelujah.